Hey guys and welcome back, it's Laura here again. In today's video we will take a deep dive into the life and works of Marit Oppenheim, a renowned surrealist artist whose use of unconventional materials and themes have left a lasting imprint on the art world. Oppenheim was born in Berlin in 1913. Her father was a wealthy German Jewish industrialist and her mother was a Swiss artist. Marit Oppenheim's passion for art blossomed from a young age, growing up in an artistic household surrounded by creativity, introducing young Marit to the world of avant-garde ideas. As a young woman, she immersed herself in the surrealist movement, embracing the idea of dreams, unconsciousness, and the merging of reality and fantasy. Influenced by artists like Salvador Dali, Man Ray and Max Ernst, Oppenheim was destined to create her own mesmerizing universe. In 1932, Oppenheim moved to Paris to study art and soon found herself immersed in the city's vibrant art scene. There she met some of the most prominent surrealist artists of the time. In Paris, she became a surrealist artist who carved her name into art history with her unique and thought-provoking creations. Marette Oppenheim quickly gained recognition within the surrealist circle, exhibiting three paintings at the Salon des Souris de Pendant in Paris in 1933. Her encounter with Man Ray led to becoming his muse, resulting in the iconic photograph Erotic Voile, Erotic Veiled, where she she appeared nude behind a printing press wheel, her hand covered in ink against her forehead. Published in the surrealist journal Minateur in 1934, this provocative image showcased Oppenheim's daring exploration of sexuality and the unconscious, solidifying her position as a groundbreaking artist within the surrealist movement. In the late 1930s, Marette Oppenheim embarked on a captivating collaboration with fashion designer Elsa Schiaparelli, resulting in a unique and transformative clothing collection. The collaboration focused on creating gloves that explored themes of identity and personal transformation. Each pair of gloves embodied different intriguing themes, ranging from painted fingernails to claws and even bones depicted on an x-ray style. Among them, the design featuring red nails proved to be the most iconic and widely imitated, inspiring numerous knockoffs. This exciting partnership between Oppenheim and Schiaparelli left a lasting impact on the world of fashion, showcasing their shared passion for pushing artistic boundaries and redefining the concept of wearable art. In 1936, Oppenheim created one of her most famous works, Object, which made her an instant sensation and controversy. While having a conversation with Pablo Picasso and Dora Maar at the Parisian Café, the idea for the piece was born. The concept was simple yet thought-provoking to cover a teacup, saucer and spoon with fur, challenging the conventional meanings of objects and their associations. It was considered shocking and scandalous at the time, however this work remains one of the most iconic pieces of surrealist art to this day. The choice of fur is intended to the surrealism elements that is derived from the unexpected placement of taboo material upon a regular household item, resulting in a strange otherworldly object. Oppenheim stated that she wanted to create a sculpture that made the everyday familiar object seem so strange that it would be impossible to use them in their usual context. Oppenheim's use of fur has also been interpreted as referencing the fetishization of women's bodies, as fur was often used in fashion to draw attention to a woman's sensuality. Oppenheim has stated that she was attempting to explore the erotic connotations and fetishization that was associated with fur. Oppenheim's works commonly incorporated everyday objects that she transformed into strange otherworldly pieces. She was fascinated by the way the materials could be animated and given a new life beyond their intended use. This resulted in her being known for infusing her works with great sense of whimsy, playfulness and irony. Breton later named the piece Le Dejeuner en Furia, The Fur Breakfast. The artwork's title is a play on words referencing the French painting Le Dejeuner sur l'herbe the Luncheon on the Grass by Edward Manet. During the 1930s, Oppenheim continued to experiment with surrealist themes, such as those of the unconscious mind and psychoanalysis. 
For example, in her piece, My Governante, My Nurse, Men Kindermädchen, is another great example where lines with the surrealist fascination with dreams, sexuality, and the influence of Sigmund Freud's psychoanalysis, which was a groundbreaking field during that period. Surrealist ideas sought to access the subconscious mind and explore the uncanny aspects of human existence. In this context, shoes like everyday objects can be seen as symbols, charged with sexual meaning and creating sense of fetishism. Mireille Oppenheim's works often revolve around the construction of femininity, challenging societal norms and expectations placed upon women. In the artwork, the string tied around the shoes could symbolise the constraints and roles imposed on women by society, highlighting the struggle of conforming to prescribed gender roles. By combining the shoes with frilly paper ruffles, Oppenheim disrupts the ordinary and elevates them to surreal and thought-provoking symbols of femininity, urging viewers to question the stereotypical representations of women. This piece continues to resonate with contemporary audiences due to its exploration of gender dynamics and the need to challenge the enforced roles in society. Oppenheim's masterful use of symbolism and surreal elements invites viewers to delve into the complexities of femininity, identity and the subconscious mind. As a result, the artwork remains a significant and enduring contribution to the surrealist movement and its engagement with the human psyche and societal constructs. Oppenheim was also an accomplished painter and illustrator. She created a series of watercolours, drawings and prints that dealt with surrealist themes and showed the sense of playfulness and irony as her sculptures. Throughout her career, Oppenheim maintained close relationships with many other artists of the surrealist movement. She was known for her strong will, determination and unflinching embrace of the unconventional. Her work has remained hugely influential in the world of contemporary art. During Marette Oppenheim's middle years, from the 1940s to the 1960s, her life was marked by turbulence and challenges. The period began with the outbreak of World War II, which had profound impact on her personal and artistic life. As a Swiss-born artist living in Paris during the war, Oppenheim faced immense difficulties and uncertainty. She was forced to flee Paris in 1940, seeking refuge in Switzerland due to the advancing Nazi occupation which disrupted her creative process and artistic pursuits. In addition to the upheaval caused by war, Oppenheim had also experienced personal struggles including financial difficulties and mental health issues. She grappled with depression and anxiety, which affected her ability to create art consistently. The turbulent circumstances during the period left her feeling disconnected from the art world and contributed to the temporary decline in her artistic output. Despite these challenges, Oppenheim's artistic spirit creativity endured in the mid-1950s. She gradually re-established herself as an artist and began producing new works that showcased her signature surrealist style. In 1959, Mireille Oppenheim organised one of the most influential and controversial events in modern art history, known as Spring Banquet. This private performance featured invitees feasting on a naked woman's body, symbolising a celebration of fertility and connection between human beings and nature. The surrealist leader, André Breton, convinced her to repeat the event at Eros, Exposition Internationale du Surrealisme, in Paris, renaming it Cannibal Feast. The change in its name distorted Oppenheim's original intent, leading to intense criticism that she had objectified and exploited a woman as a consumable entity. This event sparked debates about the boundaries of art and ethical consideration, and it remains a pivotal moment in Oppenheim's artistic career, so much that she never exhibited with the Surrealists again. In 1983, Oppenheim was awarded the Grand Prix of the Swiss Art Award, and in 2006, she was made a of the Legion of Honour in France. In the last years of her life, Marie Oppenheim continued to create art and contribute to the art world despite facing health challenges. During this period, she explored different mediums including drawing, sculpture and her poetry. Her artistic style evolved incorporating elements of abstraction and introspection reflecting her personal experiences and reflections. In 1985, Oppenheim passed away in Basel, Switzerland. 
leaving behind a profound legacy as one of the most influential female artists of the Surrealist movement. Her artistic journey challenged societal norms and paved the way for future generations of women artists. Oppenheim's exploration of identity, femininity and the subconscious continues to resonate with contemporary artists and audiences, inspiring conversations about gender, sexuality and human psychology. That concludes this video on Mireille Oppenheim. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more exciting stories from the world of art and design. If there's an artist you'd like me to explore, please let me know in the comments below. See you on the next one. Bye!